Hello and welcome all of you out there and I'm back after a short break. I had some dental work going on but I won't get into it. Let's just get into what's the most enjoyable Arctems out there because why not? In at number 10 I simply had to put the Velonosaur. I really do love this as an art creature and sort of just as a general concept. It really does work well with its spine attack abilities just being one of the most enjoyable in my opinion and it's sort of sad that wild cards never really revisited this creature and sort of added something similar to it but it also is technically a good thing too it stands by its own and with the r velonosaurs on genesis part 2 you've got some even better ones out there if you wish to have the upgraded version but both still offer a lot of versatility in the combat scene of course you wouldn't use them that close to a theory but you know it's just for proof of concept in the b-roll and their stamina also goes on for absolutely ages you're going to have no problems with stamina drain on a creature like this they truly are one of the most enjoyable in my opinion next up i've decided to put the rhino ganatha and although not a big favorite of mine just for other reasons which i won't get into today because i still really like the creature and it's not really uh, valid in my opinion but my brain is my brain uh, this creature just can do an incredible amount and that incredible amount and that ability to pick up just such large creatures still always is fascinating and enjoyable to me like picking up rexes and parasitheriums and things like that that just seems really insane to me and it excites me every time i see one of these things do that or just generally when i do it because you always think of can creatures like that in a cryopod or soul traps because who really uses cryopods unless you're playing on official or on console just use soul traps there they're just far far better they are a little bit rare sometimes i find to actually tame and the tame method is pretty enjoyable too as long as you get it right it's exactly the same as the reaper tame method such as just impregnates a dino instead of yours your own self sorry and um you're also going to need a bunch of resources which will appear on screen at some point rather than the xp so the tame method in my opinion isn't quite as enjoyable as the reaper but that creature is later on the list and i think we'll talk about this thing a little bit later but still a very enjoyable creature to ride around on deal damage with and pick up insanely large creatures with next up i've decided to put the gas bags on the list as the idea of the gas bags still just really excites me as an art player and it's sort of comedically funny in the way it moves it's just basically passing gas as it moves through the sky because it doesn't actually fly in the sense of using its wings it simply uses its air which it fills up through its mouth so you know it's it's a funny concept from wild cards and i really enjoy it and once you get around controlling one it can be a very fun experience to have around friends and even if you're not great at flying one like i was in the b-roll i should really update this at some point you can still have a heck of a time as well as long as you don't end up losing everything and getting things killed because there obviously is a probability to some extent which you know uh, you always got to be careful out there arc is arc at the end of the day and it will throw you onto the bus quite a lot this is a really great uh, traveler of heavy things though it has a great amount of weight and it flies at quite a decent speed it doesn't even need a saddle the saddle's only there if you want to bring a mate along with you which is why i said it's quite good if you've got a friend too just really adds to the enjoyable level of this creature but also just playing games with your friends is generally more enjoyable than just playing it by yourself in at number seven we've got the baryonyx and i simply have to put this creature here at least in my opinion because of the huge experience that i've had with a creature like this it really does excite me as an arc tame it is such an easy one and yet so useful and versatile to the general arc player a lot can be done with a baryonyx that really can't be done with other creatures at least within the range of when you're going to be taming this thing it's saddles dirt cheap as well it is an insanely great caving mount capable of fitting into any sort of cave with absolute ease apart from the artifacts of the sky lord but basically a dung beetle is not even going to fit in that either you've got to crouch through bits of that there's not really a point of bringing creatures into that cave but when you do bring this into any sort of cave you're going to demolish all creatures that you can find in the area you'll have absolutely no issues with that whatsoever you're going to tower through tons and tons of creatures and just have no issues whatsoever health wise and damage wise because they really do pack they're great at swimming as well with their spin attack they can stun creatures like the size of megalodon they truly are fantastic tames really enjoyable to ride on and just generally really enjoyable creatures coming up next we have got the desmodus and for me is there really anything more fun than 
just a blood bag farm that can also do 30% of your turns with a click of a button. It is just such an enjoyable creature to have around. The Sanguine Elixir, again, 30% of your team is done like that with a click of a button and their blood bag farms. And for a creature later on the list, that is going to be an extremely useful thing for me. Might not be quite for you, but definitely for me. But even if you're thinking of taming more Desmodus, it's still going to be useful to you. They have the glide ability as well, and they are rapidly fast flies. You're never going to be let down by the speed of these things. At least, I'm not in any sense. And they can also grapple onto walls, virtual surfaces, or ceilings, like a Tapujara, which is another quite nice creature. Although, I think I'm not really too fond on it. The Desmodus is definitely a far better creature in my eye. It spawns on Fjorda, really isn't too difficult to tame. Your first one is obviously going to be the hardest, but then you've got a Bloodbag farm, so it really isn't going to be too difficult for all the others. Just great flyers, great use for PvP, great use for PvE. And at number 5, we have got the Astro Delphis, and I'm also going to put the Tropognatus here as sort of a, a side note, but I really love both of these creatures, as they are just such fast flies. They are so rapid, like genuinely, you can get a lot done with the speed of these things. You can traverse maps with absolute ease. You should have no issues whatsoever, especially in just generally getting from A to B really quickly. Even in the damage department too, they excel with all of their lasers or just a bomb firing apparatus. And although maybe there's a little bit more gauge on how fast you're going on the Tropognatus, in my opinion, the Astrodelphus is just more of the smoother flyer. Although its saddle is unlocked a little bit later on, and arguably its tail method's harder, although I've always found it a bit easier, in my opinion, because Element is found everywhere on Gen 2, and if you just do it right and take precautions for Void Roams in the area, you really should have no issues, even getting one of these things quite early on. In the early days of the channel, I also made a guide to taming one of these things. It's an absolutely terrible video, but if you want to check it out, then uh, you can add to about the 20 views that it's got at the moment. It like came out basic. It came out over a year ago now. Uh, actually, maybe don't look up. That's an embarrassing time in my channel. In number four, we have got the Reaper, and this. It's just one of those creatures where it's like, can anything really get better than a Xenomorph alien? Obviously, apart from the creatures which are in the 1, 2, and 3 spots, at least for me, um, yeah, this thing really is up there when it comes into enjoyable arc tames. It is such a great marathon to tame one of these things with its, some may say, laboriously long method and also quite difficult one too, but I find it really isn't too bad once you get into it, and if it all goes well for you, which, if you prepare enough, it should, unless Ark's just being Ark and it absolutely ruins everything for you, then it should be a reasonably enjoyable experience. Simply trap it and get its health below 1000, that being a Reaper Queen, of course, and then you need to let it impregnate you, get loads of XP, and then once your Reaper baby is born, uh, try and claim that thing. Some Reaper pheromones will help if uh, that baby's still trying to kill you, because it probably will, to be honest. They're not strictly necessary, at least I'm pretty sure, so I don't think you have to feed the, them to it early on, but I would keep them there for safe measure. They're not quite the hardest things to get, but it will take a little bit of elbow grease. But then you got yourself a cool Reaper, and it's such a great arc of progression. I love taming these things every single time on AB. Yes, they can be easily obtained on Gen 2, but I don't really see the fun in that because it's really, really just not difficult in my opinion, and I love the progression. In at number 3, we have got the Maywing, and this is so enjoyable to me as, come on, look at firstly just how good this thing's model is. I love the design of this creature. It's sort of like a flying sky platypus, and it's really captured the hearts of many art players ever since its release. But also why it's just so enjoyable is it's just so fast. It's like honestly insane. This thing travels at such a pace. Basically nothing can keep up to it unless it's had insane movement speed uh, levels put into it, which isn't possible on basically all these servers out there because little have fly speed leveling. I'm also pro uh, fly speed leveling, by the way, if you're wondering. I think Ark should really bring it back. I guess, yeah, it was a little bit game-breaking, but maybe set a limit on it for those official servers, like 135% or 150% or something like that, because it really does add a nice dynamic. Yeah, 1,000 movement speed mailings would be absolutely insane, and I've tested them out on some single-player servers, and they are so fun to ride on when they're that speed, but also a little bit not, because you just get stuff and everything. That's a support of being troughs, so it is an enjoyable thing for breeders. 
they're pretty decent swimmers too and they can gather berries but the main reason why they're here is just the main wings are so good with their speed it's honestly insane in number two i've decided to put the blood stalker as this is my favorite all-time just basically general traveling mount out there while i love the may wing and it's got loads of great speed on it for just generally all travel combined that including underwater travel especially because i do actually spend quite a lot of time down there i don't know why i've been doing that as of late but i'm just really enjoying it i guess um just for general travel on the surface as well they work so effectively and they are my favorite travel mount at the moment not only can you see all the aggros of the creatures but they are fast in literally any environment underwater and on land maybe not in lava but i don't think any creature is apart from the magma saw but that's not on the list because it really isn't one of my favorites out there at least just generally in my opinion but I do find these things to be very quick and agile in basically every environment that you're going to face. Again, the underwater environment travel of this creature is just insane. And that is one of the main reasons why I'm putting it here. As yes, a basilo is immune to all the electric eels and jellyfish. But you can easily skip away from them with a creature like this. And you can see if that aggroes onto you well before they even reach you. Which is why these things are just amazing. There's just so much peace of mind put into this creature. And they've really seemingly been so well designed for all of these environments and i just love them dearly especially with the desmodus being bloodback farms i can tame as many of these things really as i want but usually i'll just settle for one high level maybe get another one and then i've got a breeding pair and then i'll breed them together and then just take the baby of that ride it around and then if it dies i'll just breed those two bloodstalkers together again and boom i've got another bloodstalker but i'll usually keep a couple of baby spare because you should always keep some spare of your favorite dinos and coming in at number one we've got the deinonychus i really can't find anything that is more enjoyable just as a general creature to me like the deinonychus it is such a good one for any kind of boss fight it just deals a, a heck of a lot of damage really and with the bleed ability being inflicted on bosses as well it is an all gore out fight and i really do like these creatures for that it adds just a sort of comicness to these creatures and that's something which i really enjoy just there's blood spewing absolutely everywhere on this bronto and soon enough it is very very much dead with the pack buff too you are buffed like absolute hell and you've got tons of these things going after you as well obviously along with you as sort of your your pack mates to help those boss fights go by as quickly as possible even for longer ones like the master controller i find they still work well yes a couple of health mutations are probably required but it's not the hardest thing in the world to get those done at least from my experience yes on official everything it's still going to be a pain but i'm working with 2.5x rates here with 5x on breeding because i don't like to wait quite that long uh, because uh, a giga taking a week on official is something which i really don't want that's raising time by the way they can also scale any kind of wall or vertical surface with absolute ease the climbing and a sort of parkour that these creatures offer is one which is sort of highly sought after the thyla does it very well too but the deinonychus is just a better creature overall the only thing it lacks is that underwater travel but realistically i'm not going to be using it for that i'm just using it for everything else the top 10 most fun arc tomes in at number 10 we have got the carcodontosaurus and the reason why i've put this creature here as personally i really do find it fun to just go and ride around on one of these things and then obviously you can just absolutely decimate tons and tons of creatures across the map it really does just make for a very fun experience with a creature like this if you can absolutely dominate the space across a map and just like kill everything in your sight there is something inherently fun about that the giga kind of does do the same but i find its mobility does lack quite a lot and that kind of stops the fun compared to this creature whereas you can just go for ages with this thing and you don't really run out of stamina and the damage just keeps getting higher until that blood rage is full so there's just a lot of element of fun just with you essentially feeling like you're on top of the world like you're the the strongest creature out there when you're on this thing obviously you're not but still there's just so much fun in even taming these things and also just for general use as well after you've obviously tamed them the turn process i find if it glitches it can be really infuriating but if it actually does go smoothly it's quite a fun and enjoyable one especially if you've got a few friends along the way and sometimes if it bugs and you've got a few friends along the way it still does provide for fun experiences you can just laugh about how the game is failing a lot and you know arc players do like to do that a lot but yeah 
that's why I say the Cochran Saurus is a very fun tame. Next up, we've got the Managama, and this creature is here, as you can absolutely zoom across the map with this thing and also just as a general mount just for traveling around on they are really accessible successful sorry in the fun department i find these creatures are just insane to zoom around with their mobility really does make them very fun creatures and although their tone method doesn't really have anything to do with the uh, the funness scale we'll call it for the purpose of this video i find as long as it does go smoothly it can be a reasonably enjoyable one to do because it's not just the standard knockout tone there is some sense of variety within it which you know it, it makes these things slightly more interesting you could say to get around which i think does hugely benefit these creatures on this list and it, obviously the main reason why they're here is because of that insane speed having these creatures travel at such a rate really does make them insanely fun for me and you know as as a player that doesn't usually tend to just go around with creatures like this whenever i do hop on one it really is sort of a breath of fresh air in a way because i always love coming back to these creatures and using them i really should use them even more but they have been obviously nerfed since release they're not quite as good as they used to be but it's still nice to have that speed and agility it really does add a huge element of fun to these things next up we have got the astrodelphus and this creature is here because like come on it's got such an insane speed and i promise not all the creatures on this list are just simply here because of an insane amount of speed because you know although fast creatures are definitely really fun maybe the the funnest creature out there on the funnest scale is not necessarily the fastest one but for the case of the astrodelphus and also i'm going to say the trophy ignathus it really does help significantly that they are fast they would be less fun if they weren't especially considering all the agility that they can do and they can do it at such a speed it's so fun and also just enjoyable to do you really do love these creatures just for all of their insane mobility skills and that's kind of what makes them really fun the same goes for the trophy ignatus and also with their uh, immense amount of weaponry on top of it as well it adds even more on top of it they're just so packed with useful nice abilities and they're just well designed very mobile creatures that really do go quite a long way for giving you a better playing experience it really does have something to be said that these are some fun creatures and yes i'm putting two in at this spot because i was being a bit indecisive but mainly the astrodelphus but obviously the trobionatus does fit into a very similar category of creature so i decided to put it here as well next up in at number seven we have got the rhino ganatha and this creature is simply here because like come on who doesn't love to ride around on this giant insect thing and although it's a little bit too op for my liking it definitely is a hugely enjoyable creature to ride around on and use generally across any map obviously they only spawn on the island and lost island in the swamp areas but still you can transfer them to other maps and they're useful in a lot of other scenarios obviously they're great for just doing general pvp raiding but they're just great as general travel mounts as well they can pick up tons of creatures too so if you want to get to some bosses fast instead of herding all your wrecks up to the volcano you can always use a rhino ganatha if that's something that you want to do you can obviously just use cries and stuff like that as well but you know if you want to do it that way you can also if you just want to take some creatures across the map or if you don't have access to the cryos at the moment uh, you can always just take a creature back with it although you probably would at the time that you tame this thing unless you, you've been gifted one by like a server admin or something like that rare scenarios but you know maybe sometimes it would happen their tow method is pretty much the same as the repo it's just been ripped off of it obviously it doesn't really count as a rip off because it's made by the same people but still you know i thought they could have been a little bit more inventive with the tow method but it definitely still is an enjoyable one because i really do like the tow method of the reaper and you know it's a very nice one to do i don't really like the fact that now you need to use loads of materials instead of gathering xp i prefer the the reaper's tail method in that regard but apart from that really fun and enjoyable tail method i know you don't really factor that in usually but i find the tail method is quite fun as well it really does make me want to tame the creature more and then once i've tamed it if it's still fun it really does just elevate it on this list i'm, I'm just gonna say and it, it definitely really does deserve to be up here it can demolish tons of creatures it's fast it can pick up tons of things and it just it's such a great flyer for all kinds of things and for that it really does deserve to be on this list because it can't be demoted for its insane amount of skill and power and also just the amount of thought and design that's gone into this creature from wildcard it really does just make it an even better one and nicer one to use 
And obviously, sadly, you're going to lose yourself a creature, but I think it's all worth it to get yourself a Rhino Ganatha. Next up, we have got ourselves the Velonosaur, and this creature is here because I really love shooting those spines out of this creature. I find that it's just such a useful and effective ability. Like, I know it's not really the most complicated thing out there, but I really just do enjoy this creature's simplicity in a way. It makes it so much more enjoyable to me. Very easy to tame, and obviously you can get those Arvelonosaurs on Gen 2 as well. Like, honestly, great creatures to tame. If you haven't already and you have access to them, please go tame yourself with an so You'll not regret it. Just for general use, they're insane. You can even take them into bosses if you want to. I'm pretty sure they can go into boss fights. If not, that might just be because I have some sort of mod installed. Obviously, maybe not the best boss creature out there, but still, I do find it fun from time to time to go out on one of these creatures and do some bosses with them, And but mainly for just general travel around the map. I find them to be extremely effective, and obviously, that's what I use them for the most, and I really do enjoy them for that. They're truly fun creatures, especially that spine attack that I was talking about there. It just it adds so much depth and character to these creatures, even though they're so simple. They're so basic in their simplicity that it makes them really fun because they're so simple. You instantly know what to do with these creatures. There's no faffing around with things. It is just boom, there you go, done. It really does make these creatures so effective in this department. In at number five, we've got ourselves the Gigantoraptor, and I kind of feel like I have to put this creature here. I know it's still a really new one, but I've been really just enjoying it. It's a very mobile creature, and yeah, obviously you can throw eggs out to tame it as well, but I found just trapping it works just fine, and for me, that makes the tame method a lot more fun because I don't really just go into all the process of getting those eggs, and the mini game is definitely a very nice one to have, and I like how inventive that tail method is as it's something we've never seen before i did expect them to be a little bit larger but obviously that doesn't really matter but you really feel like you can do pretty much anything with these creatures yeah maybe they don't deal the most damage out in the world they still can deal a hefty amount and you can pretty much destroy everything on the map with these things and obviously you can carry babies with them like you could on a maywing and you know there's just there's so much use out of these creatures and i know they're only new but still you can get tons of great use out of these things next up we have got the blood storm and I really do love these things for just general travel and underwater exploration as just me as a person I've always really liked the thought of an ocean and just oceans and games always make me just generally quite excited that's why I really liked playing through some Nautica and Raft and all those games they really are some of my favorites out there and the fact that I can use the Bloodstalker to do some insane underwater exploration in Ark it really does make it a hugely fun creature for me and also just generally you can just basically pretend to be spider man going around the map and obviously do kind of get an awesome spyglass sort of effect as well as you can see all the aggressive creatures just generally makes them really useful because not everyone does have access to awesome spyglass out there so you do essentially once you have one of these creatures and the tone method is pretty inventive as well especially considering they did it first you can obviously just feed them some moss chops prior to when you actually feed them the blood bags which is obviously in your inventory in yourself to get some 100 effectiveness it's really not that much of a challenge whatsoever and obviously on gen 1 you can just get some hexagons anyway and then from that you can obviously get no you can get hexagons with the bloodstalker from the bloodstalker race missions that's what i meant to say it went a bit off track of thought there either way insanely great just general travel mounts and obviously great for underwater exploration which is the main reason why i'm putting them here kind of a little bit undervalued relating to my last video that will be at the end of this video if you do want to go watch that to do the bloodstalker because i find people don't use it for that enough and it really is great for that and obviously you can also just grapple creatures in and kind of suck the life out of them too and if you have blood bag on you it can heal itself quite quickly as well so it's useful and versatile and fun in so many ways in another three we have got the desmodus and this creature is here just because like come on it's the desmodus it is this like nordic bat obviously i know it's not really nordic in a sense but it comes from a very nordic map which is why i'm obviously calling it that although obviously it was much much before the nordic period when this thing actually did exist if it did exist not to this scale though i'm pretty sure it was actually an existing thing though and this creature is just insanely great for pvp and although i don't use it i, I don't actually play Ark a lot in pvp is what i meant to say um, whenever i do it's really fun to just pick players off mounts with these things really useful ability also that gliding ability general speed makes them really nice just as a general fast traveling mount it really does just make these creatures even more fun to me and obviously with sanguine elixir 
taming creatures becomes an absolute breeze and you know that makes these things even more fun for me to use so it's just pretty much in the endless versatility with things that you can do with these creatures and i really do love them for that and i get so much fun out of many uses with this creature next up we have got the reaper and obviously i had to put this creature here come on look at this thing like this is that ultimate art creature capable of just so much stuff in the fun department it's tame method is insane to get through like i love taming these things again i did say with the rhino ganatha but i find it is an even better taming method than that and also i find they're just more fun creatures to use they fit into the map so much better than something like the rhino ganatha and i felt like more thought and design was been put into them and although yes maybe people would prefer to have that other tail ability which does still topple to creatures, which the Reaper Queen does, instead of just the one that slows down enemy creatures. That's the only one real downside I can think of the Reaper. They still are so fun to ride around on, as you just feel like you can decimate everything in the map. They can just deal tons of damage, and they're pretty agile in the mobility aspect too. They can even bury themselves underground. There's, like, pretty much endless uses for these creatures, and I really do love them for that. There's just, there's so much you can do with a Reaper, especially if you tame a good one and you put all the effort in it. There's, like, no better a feeling than really getting to that stage and getting that successful reaper tame it really does just it always works out for you mentally you really do feel so so proud of yourself when you turn with these things and it is a hugely fun experience once you've done it right and finally in at number one we have got ourselves the deinonychus and i feel like this creature really does have to be here as it deserves to be on this list as it's just it's so versatile in so many ways such a great fun boss creature once you've got a big pack of these things there is no better feeling than driving these things straight into tons of creatures which are really difficult to kill and absolutely decimating them with tons of blood flying everywhere because obviously that bleed ability just grappling onto creatures and ripping them to shreds it really is just hugely satisfying and no other creature really gives me the same kick as these creatures do i know loads of people get the same kind of kick as saying like a shadow man but i vastly prefer the deinonychus the tail method although not the most inventive is actually just a pretty nice one i like how it's just the wyvern's tail method but a little bit modified it's a lot easier than taming a wyvern as well especially if you're taming wyverns on scorched earth and obviously then you can just assemble a huge pack of these things and decimate loads of things across the map they also um, do have insane amounts of speed as well again making these creatures even more fun because with more speed it is better on obviously that funness scale these things also don't take full damage so there's no kind of loss of immersion in a sense of where you can just kind of do what you want and you're just so immersed in it, this creature that you have no care in the world for what's about to come up next and obviously they can park up walls as well nothing really can stand in your way in terms of terrain obviously unless it's just lava but no creature really can go through that unless you're obviously on a magma saw but that creature's not on this list because you know in my opinion that's still a good creature but it does not compare to the dynamicus which is in at the number one spot but anyway that is the end of today's video and i really hope that you all enjoyed as i definitely did enjoy making this one as always comment down below what is the most fun arc 10 for you if you didn't agree with this list also put your 10 most fun arc creatures in the comments below so shout out to this month's patrons karina thorne dominic macy drewski sorry about the pronunciation there louis oren Levi, McDaniel, Ellen, Marsonson, and Jim Fowley. I appreciate all of your support, and if you're not a Patreon, then go join now.